What's up, Trainiacs? You wanted a review of the brand new on running Cloud Ace? You get a review of the new on running Cloud Ace. So, the on running Cloud Ace just came out right at the beginning of July, and on running sent this out to me. This isn't paid, but they did send it out for free to give it a shot. However, they did that with the caveat that this on running shoe is unlike all of the other on running shoes. They've explained it as like a stability cushioned, heavier kind of trainer, something for somebody that enjoys more like a like an Asics gel Cyano, like that 10 ounce plus kind of really beefy trainer with a lot of structure kind of shoe. And that, from my standpoint, is something that's totally foreign. I tend to like something that's more in like the seven to nine ounce range, something that has a lot of flexibility, something that has a fair bit of pop off the ground and some cushioning, but is certainly more along the lines of a racing flat. This is not that. However, I surprisingly liked it. For starters, it was a lot smoother than I expected. Normally, I tend not to like those more built up structured shoes because it feels like my foot can't move naturally and like I'm running on bricks and that basically there's just a lot more shoe than there really needs to be. The first few steps that I started running, I was like, whoa, that is a heavy shoe. But once I started going, it still, it felt kind of like an on running shoe. It was still nice and smooth. It didn't restrict my foot from moving one way or the other. So as far as built up shoes go, I tolerated this one. I actually enjoyed the half a dozen runs or so that I've been testing this with. Now it certainly is a heavier shoe coming in at about 11.8 ounces and it does have that heavy shoe kind of sound, kind of thump, thump, thump on the ground as you're going. Now because of that, it's important to know if you're thinking about buying this shoe, what it's for. It isn't for your speed work. So your tempo runs on the road, your fast speed work on the track, it's not gonna be very good for that because in those runs, you want really light shoes so that your feet can get the sensation and build up the muscle memory to be getting off the ground really quick. This is more for those long, steady runs where you want a little bit more structure, you want more comfort, more cushioning to take some of the load off your body. That's what this is intended for. Even if you're into garbage miles, I'm not a big fan of garbage miles, but if you're just in the habit of getting in miles each and every day for the sake of getting in miles, and you want for those garbage miles a shoe that's gonna take the load off your body, this will do that. Now let's get into the design and why it ends up feeling the way it does. Now for one, it's got a fairly decent push forward. It's not like the Nike Zoom Flies where it just propels you forward, but it has this bar of plastic in between the footbed and the sole of the shoe that gives it that little bit of press forward that encourages you to start running forward instead of having to kind of muscle your way through the shoe. Now the sole of the shoe is the first on running shoe that has the zero gravity clouds on the heel and then the on running pods on the forefoot. And what that results in is a nice bit of cushioning as you land on either your midfoot or your heel. Like, but those pods on the front give you that nice on feeling of a firm toe off. It also has the V shape down the center of the shoe that all of the 2018 on running shoes have. And that resulted in no gravel getting stuck in all these pods like the 2016s, the 2017 on running shoes have. That wasn't the case with this. As far as traction goes, Really good on the road as you would expect with a road design shoe. Fine on grass, which you might not expect from a road design shoe. And actually, I went on the trails with this over the last couple days and it was surprisingly really good. I think that all of the different edges along the bottom make for a decent trail running shoe because there's just more edges to grab on. Now, I wouldn't use this for like really serious technical trail running, but as far as road, grass, little bit of gravel, little bit of technical trail running goes, did fine. 
There is a seven millimeter heel to toe drop, but it doesn't feel like it's really plush or cushy. It's more of a, more of a firm sole without a ton of flexibility. And just in general, that's kind of the flavor of the overall shoe. There's just, there's more, more squishy tongue. There's more padding on the inside. There's more heel cup. There's just more, more. However, in sizing, it's probably just a little bit less. Availability wise, all they had was a half size large for me. So they sent it out anyway, but I was able to run in this quite comfortably over the last few weeks. Now the key thing here, it comes right down to it is, do I like them and recommend them? Well, if you are somebody who likes structured shoes, yes, I think you'll like them. I am not somebody who likes structured shoes. So while I did enjoy running in them, it's just not something that I gravitate towards. I almost always was reaching for something other than these shoes just because it's not my jam. But if you're somebody who is into those like Asics Gel Kyanos, these are a very good option. They feel nice and smooth as I mentioned. They are a fair bit warm, so my foot got a little bit sweaty and because of that I probably wouldn't be going out barefoot in these, but with main trainers that's not really the point. And like a lot of Ons, they've got that really big heel cup, so probably gonna dig into your heel over the first 50 to 100K. Now let's get into the deal breaker in these shoes that precludes me from being able to say, yes, absolutely go out and buy these. These cost $200 US. That is one of the most expensive running shoes out there right now. And granted, On has a lot of programs if you search around on their website or you listen to some podcasts that they sponsor where you've got a 30 day try it for free period. However, I always come down to what is the dollar per mile in the shoe? So in the case of something like a Skechers where it only costs about $100 but you get only 200K out of it, dollar per mile, probably works out to about the same as a $150 shoe where you get closer to three or 400 kilometers, or a Hoka where it costs more like $170, but you get three to four, 500 kilometers out of it. For this, to get that same dollar per mile out of it at 200 bucks, you gotta be getting upwards of five, six, 700 clicks in this shoe. And by that time, I think you're gonna be tired of it and will that footbed hold up to that type of mileage? It's hard to say. So who this is for is somebody who loves on, has a fair bit of cheddar, likes a really structured shoe, and trusts that it's gonna be able to last them for a long time. Or really, they just don't care if it lasts for a long time. They wanna try the shoe. So there you go. Give it a shot. Thanks for sending it out on. I like you guys. You made a good shoe. Damn, you pricey. All right, Trainiacs, if you aren't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button below. And if you are subscribed and you wanna see more shoe reviews, hit the like button. They seem to do well. I imagine a fair bit of likes.